The veteran lifted his glass, eyes focused on the shimmering liquid inside. The dim light of the bar did little to soften the hard lines of his face. His name was Major Cole, but in the war, they had called him the Titan Slayer. He didn't ask for the title, but after surviving the first battle against them, it stuck. Across from him sat Zortal, an alien commander from the Rydellian Federation, a former enemy. His gray skin was marred by the same kind of scars Cole had, marks of combat that transcended species. Their war had ended years ago, but the memories still burned, as fresh as the day the Titans first landed. You remember the mountain pass? Sortal asked, breaking the silence. His voice was deep, smooth, like gravel sliding down a cliff. Cole nodded, eyes narrowing. It was cold. Too damn cold, Cole said. He set the glass down. The room felt small. We were outnumbered. Six Titans. Thirty or so Rydellian shock troops. And just a handful of us left. He tapped the table, the echo of gunfire and battle screams ringing in his mind. Sortal's mandibles clicked softly, a sign of nervousness. But his voice remained steady. We thought it would be easy. A slaughter, really. Cole snorted. Yeah, we thought the same thing. Until we saw them. His mind drifted back to the sight of the first Titans smashing through their lines like they were nothing. The Titans stood three stories tall, with thick black exoskeletons and arms that could crush a tank. They were the perfect killing machines. We barely had time to react, Cole continued, staring at nothing, seeing everything. Two men crushed beneath the first step. The rest of us just scrambled for cover. And that's when I knew. He paused, his voice low. Sordal tilted his head, intrigued. That's when you split your unit, isn't it? Cole nodded again. We needed chaos. Titans don't think fast. They're built for brute force. So we scattered, dug in, used the terrain. His lips twisted into a grim smile. The pass was narrow. We had explosives some old charges meant for demolition work. Sortal's eyes widened. Had to. There was no other way. Cole leaned forward, his knuckles white against the table. We lured them in, detonated the charges, brought the rocks down on them. Two titans went down hard, pinned beneath the rubble. Zordal let out a low whistle. And the rest? Cole's grin faded. The rest wasn't so easy. The charges slowed them, but not enough. That's when we hit them with everything we had. Rocket launchers, grenade rounds, anything that could penetrate that armor. The memory was bitter. Men screamed. Guns roared. The ground shook beneath them. But they didn't stop. They couldn't stop. Sordal clicked his mandibles again. And you. You took on the last one yourself, didn't you? Cole's eyes darkened. That's what they say. He didn't speak of how his team died around him, how he was the last one standing as the final titan roared through the smoke. He didn't mention how the others lay broken, crushed beneath the rubble and metal, while he stood alone with a half-empty rocket launcher. The titan came at him like a freight train, its massive fists smashing everything in its path. But Cole had seen its movements, knew how to avoid the strikes. It was a dance, and he had learned the steps quickly. Dodge, fire, move, don't think, just act. His final shot, aimed at the Titan's head, was pure instinct. The rocket hit its mark, piercing the armored skull, and the beast fell. Cole never celebrated that kill. There was no victory in it, only survival. Zordal broke the silence again. We knew fear that day. I remember my men watching, frozen as you brought that monster down. His eyes gleamed in the low light. Even then, we knew humans were different. Cole's jaw tightened. Different doesn't mean better. Zordal, we survived. That's all. The bar fell silent around them. 
but the echoes of the Titan War still hung heavy in the air. Neither man spoke for a long time, lost in the shared memories of blood, fire, and destruction. They had survived, but survival came with a cost. The next round of drinks slid across the table, and Cole stared at the swirling liquid, as if it held the answers to questions he couldn't ask. Zordal lifted his glass, his eyes studying the human closely. That wasn't the worst of it, though, was it? Sortal's voice was low. The sky burned, Cole. That's when we realized we were no longer the hunters. Cole's hand tightened around his glass. No. That was after the ambush. They came from the sky, the real titans. Zordal nodded, recalling that moment. Their ships had hung in the atmosphere like gods descending to punish the mortals below. The Rydellians had believed the titans were their ultimate weapons creatures designed to obliterate any opposition. But they hadn't anticipated humanity's adaptability. Their ships tore through ours like we were paper, Zortal said, his voice carrying the weight of that day's terror. I remember the panic in the command deck. You think you're invincible until you see the fire raining down. Cole exhaled slowly, his gaze hardening. That was when everything changed. We weren't soldiers anymore. We were survivors fighting for every inch of dirt we stood on. The Titan ships had come in waves, spewing destruction over the human and Rydellian forces alike. For the first time, both sides faced annihilation together, no longer enemies, but prey. The sky was full of them, Zordal muttered, his mandibles clicking in rhythm with his unease. You humans did something we couldn't predict. You fought them even when running was the logical choice. Cole chuckled darkly, his eyes flashing with memories of the impossible. We didn't have a choice. Running wasn't an option, so we hit them. Hard. The orbital defense grid was fried. Half our fleet was burning. But we still had one card left to play. His lips twitched into a cold smile. Ground based lasers. Sortal's eyes widened. You targeted their landing zones, took out the support ships before they could unload more Titans. Damn right, Cole said. His fingers drummed on the table, tapping out the rhythm of artillery fire. It wasn't enough to win, but it gave us a fighting chance. With their ships crippled, the Titans had to engage us directly. The war became a different kind of fight then, one that Cole and his men could actually survive. The Titans on the ground weren't invincible. Not after their air support was wiped out. But it was brutal. The Titans didn't stop. They kept coming. Zordal shifted in his seat. You lost a lot of men that day. Too many. Cole's voice was a whisper now. But we made them pay for every inch they took. The bar seemed to grow quieter as Cole's words settled in. Zordal leaned back in his chair, eyes fixed on the human. He had heard stories, but sitting here, hearing the truth from Cole's own mouth, was different. It made the myth of humanity's resilience feel real. I was commanding one of the last defense units, Cole said, voice steady but low. We were dug in outside of Rava City. That's when they made their final push. Titans landed everywhere. It was chaos. Fires, smoke, and the sound of those massive feet crashing through buildings. Zordal's mandibles twitched again. I remember. I had just been reassigned to the Eastern Front. From the reports, it sounded like hell. Cole looked directly into Zordal's eyes. It was worse than hell. But we knew that if we could hold the city, we'd cut off their main supply line. We had to dig in deep. Every man knew it was a death sentence, but we didn't flinch. We had nowhere else to go. Sordal tilted his head. But you had a plan, didn't you? Cole nodded slowly, his gaze darkening as he relived the memories. We knew we couldn't outfight them directly, but we could trap them. The Titans relied on strength, size. They weren't used to humans fighting in close quarters. So we pulled them into the city streets 
box them in. Zordal's eyes widened. Damn right. We rigged explosives under every major road. The Titans charged in like they owned the place, and we blew them to pieces. Cole paused, letting the weight of his words sink in, but it wasn't enough. They kept coming, and we were running out of men and ammo, fast. That's when Command gave the order to retreat. Sortle shook his head, but you didn't. Cole's jaw tightened, his knuckles turning white around his glass. Couldn't. Retreating would have left the civilians to die, and I wasn't about to let that happen. So, we dug in deeper, fighting street by street. Every man was on his last mag, but we kept going. We had no choice. Zordal let out a slow breath, eyes reflecting the weight of the battle. You turned that city into a fortress. Cole's lips twisted into a grim smile. It wasn't a fortress. Just a graveyard we refused to leave. We held out long enough for reinforcements to arrive, but by then, the Titans had torn through half the city. What was left of my unit made one last stand at the Capitol Tower. Zordal clicked his mandible softly. That's when you called for the orbital strike. Cole's expression hardened. We had no choice. They were too close. Too many. I ordered the strike on our own position, knowing full well we'd be wiped out too. But the Titans would fall, and that was the only thing that mattered. Zordal stared at Cole for a long moment, his voice carrying the weight of understanding. You sacrificed your entire unit. Cole's eyes were cold, distant. We didn't have time to debate it. The sky lit up, the ground burned, and in the end, the Titans were dead. So were we, but the civilians lived. That's all that mattered. The silence between them was heavy, the air thick with unspoken truths. They both knew that survival often came at a cost too great to bear. Zordal's voice softened. That's why we feared you. Cole's eyes flickered with a pain he rarely let surface. It wasn't fear that drove us. It was necessity. The Titans would have wiped out everything, and we couldn't let that happen. We fought because we had no other choice. The bar remained quiet as Zordal and Cole sat in. The weight of their shared history. The air between them buzzed with the tension of unspoken truths each word hanging like the last remnants of a war they both wished they could forget. You know, Zordal began, breaking the silence, after the orbital strike. We thought it was over. The Titans were crippled, and the war was as good as won. But then we realized it wasn't victory at all, just the end of something worse. Cole's eyes remained fixed on his drink. He didn't need to be reminded. They both knew what followed. The Titans had been defeated, but the price of that victory had reshaped the galaxy. Yeah, Cole muttered, his voice low. We won the war. But at what cost? Sortal leaned forward, his tone softer, more reflective. The Rydellians learned from you. After the Titans fell, we saw humanity in a different light. Not just as enemies but as something terrifyingly adaptive. You didn't just survive, Cole. You changed the way wars are fought. Cole looked up, his gaze hard. We didn't have a choice. We were outnumbered, outgunned, and facing extinction. What else were we supposed to do? Zortel nodded, his mandibles clicking softly. You adapted. You turned our strengths into weaknesses. That's why we feared you. Not just because you could fight, but because you could think, change the rules when we thought we had you cornered. Cole exhaled sharply. Fear doesn't win wars, Zordal. Men do. He paused, eyes drifting toward the darkened corners of the bar. But what happens when the war is over? What are we supposed to do then? The question hung between them, unanswered. The war had ended but the scars remained, on their bodies, their minds, and in the ruins of cities that would never be rebuilt. You didn't lose your humanity, Cole, 
Sortal said. Voice softer now. You did what you had to, but you never became what we expected. You fought with everything, but you never gave into the darkness. Cole's gaze snapped back to the alien's face. I didn't have the luxury of giving in. We all had a job to do, and we did it. He paused, his voice growing distant. But it's not over, is it? The Titans are gone. But the galaxy's still burning. Zordal's mandibles twitched. His expression grim. The balance of power shifted after the war. Everyone's scrambling for control now. Old alliances are breaking. New enemies are rising. And the fear of what humanity can do, well, that hasn't faded. Cole's lips curled into a bitter smile. Funny thing about fear. It never leaves. It just changes shape. He leaned back, the weariness of decades weighing down on his shoulders. We're not heroes. Zordal. We're just men who did what we had to. Zordal tilted his head, considering the words. Maybe, but history won't see it that way. You'll be remembered as the ones who stopped the Titans, the ones who changed everything. Cole shook his head, eyes hardening. The two sat in silence for a while longer, the weight of their shared past, pressing down like the rubble of the cities they had fought to protect. Both men knew that peace was never truly won, only bought with blood and sacrifice, and sometimes the price was too high. Zordal raised his glass one last time, a gesture of respect between warriors. To the ones we lost, Cole lifted his own glass, his expression unreadable, and to the ones who lived. They drank, the sound of clinking glasses, the only noise in the dimly lit bar. In that moment, they weren't human or Rydellian, veteran or commander. They were just survivors, haunted by the ghosts of a war they could never forget. Outside, the galaxy spun on, indifferent to the struggles of two old soldiers. The Titans were gone, but the echoes of their war would linger for generations to come. And in the quiet corners of places like this, men like Cole and Zordal would sit, drink, and remember the battles that defined them. Because in the end, all that was left were the echoes.